I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. Waterless places and a word to parents about the baptism of their children. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, donate. If you love our videos, if you love what we're doing trying to pass the faith to the next generation, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps higher things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. That's what we're doing here. And we need your gift in these dire times. Today, uh, earlier this week, in this video here, I talked about baptismal birthdays. I rejoiced in the gift of baptism. And that also comes with a warning. Um, and so this word, this video is for for parents. Um, it's for um, young people who are thinking about their future, are thinking about being parents in the future. Um, yeah. And, uh, so here we go. When we have little ones, we want them baptized. We, uh, even if we haven't been to church since um, our confirmation, even if we fell away from the church, something about raising a kid and wanting to do a kid right and causes us to, to want to baptize them. And, um, and so, we, and so we, we make a plan to have this beautiful ceremony of a baptism. We might call the pastor up and the like. And what, what I want you to remember, though, is that baptism needs to be watered. What I mean by that is the command given but to pastors in Matthew 28 is to baptize and teach. To uh, As you're going, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to hold dear everything I've commanded. So the command is to make disciples. The how is baptize and teach them not just baptize them and not just teach them. Baptize, teach, those are the two participles underneath the main verb, make disciples, Matthew 28. And so the pastor that you call to baptize your child has two things he needs to do. He needs to baptize your child and he needs to teach your child. If you have not been to church in a while, or if you want your child baptized, you are making a commitment to help him do those two things. Well, actually, you're doing the commitment to teach the child and to raise the child in the faith. Um, he's going to feed you both. If you have no plans of going to church and raising your kid in the faith, if your plan is to disappear until confirmation, or if you have no plan at all, you just want the baptism, you really, really need to slow down and think this through. Because again, the command is to baptize and to teach. And it is your task as a parent to make sure that your kid is taught the faith of Jesus. If you baptize a kid without any instruction, you actually do worse for the child than if you didn't baptize them at all. Here's what I mean. Two different verses, okay? The first verse is Matthew 12, 43 and following, in which the, apostles, in the, which the apostle says, and he's describing what happens when an unclean spirit goes out of a person. The unclean spirit goes out of a person, and that's what happened at, bapti happened at baptism. The baptismal rite begins with an exorcism. Depart now, unclean spirit, make room for the Holy Ghost. The, the, the thing which leaves the child goes into water, waterless places and, and looks for peace in the, in, the, in the wasteland. When it finds none, it goes back to the place where it was cast out, finding it nice and clean, washed. And then it brings more problems with its seven other spirits. And the worse the state of the person is worse than before. This is what happens when we just baptize babies and we don't care about instructing them. 
which by the way is a condemnation that our Baptist friends make. You just baptize those little babies and you don't care about them afterwards. It's like a magic trick. When we don't teach the children, they're right. The second verse that is a real important verse in pertaining to this is Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. It is impossible in the case of those who have been enlightened, those who have been raised from the dead, those who have been baptized, who have tasted the heavenly gift, have shared in the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the coming age to come, when they fall away, to be restored, to restore them again to re repentance, since they are crucifying again the Son of God to their own harm and holding them in their in, in contempt. Again, to baptize a child, to wash their sins away, to give them all the blessings of Christianity, and then do nothing makes it worse for the kid later on than if they never were baptized. This is a hard thing because grandparents and, and great-grandparents want their, the kids to be baptized, um, even if the, if, the, if the parents don't. But I'm telling you, parents, your, the commitment, the fourth commandment commitment is for you to raise that kid in the faith. It begins with baptism. It doesn't end with baptism. Baptism isn't a magic trick that once we do it, it's, everything is okay. Oh, how beautiful the ceremony was. This is important life and death stop. As important as it is to baptize your child, it is important, equally important, to raise that kid in the faith. And that's what godparents are for. Godparents are not just an honor that we give to our best buddies. Godparents are there to kick you in the tail and tell you, hey, you need to get back to church. That's what you need from godparents. So, when I'm begging you, when you become parents, or if you are a parent who hasn't baptized their child, um, and here, I'm talking about myself because my mom waited a year and two months to baptize me. All right, the, the important thing here is, the important thing here is, baptize your children and make sure they're instructed. If you stopped going to church, start going back to church. For the, if not for your own sake, for the sake of the salvation of your children, because we all want our, our kids saved. And that word, watering, that baptism, will keep those children in the faith through their teenagers, two teenage years. And man, do we need them in the faith during their teenager, teenager years. Keep them in the faith to life everlasting and into the Lord's Supper. I'm Pastor George Borkart and a sleeping dog. He's just out. And this has been another Higher Things video short.